coming up next on This Week in Torrance. Summertime is here, and it's time to break out the barbecues. Just make sure you fire them up safely. We've got some tips on how to do just that. Plus, want to change your look for the season? We'll take you to the grand opening of a new business that can help. Then a Torrance program helps protect your pets and the community. We'll give you the details. And the Torrance Farmer's Market remembers a local icon. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Summer is officially here and what better way to welcome it than to celebrate the commencement ceremonies for Torrance Public High Schools. All four schools, Torrance, North, South, and West, held their graduation ceremonies on the same day. Friends and family all came together on each school's perspective of a football field, respective football field, to celebrate this important milestone. Congratulations to all graduating classes of 2013. One man's dream to provide seniors with a special type of housing is still going strong 25 years later. Juanita Adame takes us to the 25th anniversary of Coleman Court. He was the popular man with a golden voice whom not only called bingo numbers at games, but also fought so that senior citizens could have better living standards. He actually got discounts for seniors, uh, prescription bills and also their utility bills. His name was Leo Coleman, and his dream was to one day provide senior citizens with an independent living facility that he felt matched up to his standards. He got involved in the city of Torrance politics and would go to council meetings, him and my mother, and uh, before long he was going different places with them trying to look for a nice, an idea for a place like Coleman Court. And 25 years later, Leo Coleman's legacy lives on, and his dream, now far more than reality. Coleman Court is the culmination of his dream of what a senior housing should be. Coleman Court was opened 25 years ago, and today houses more than 78 senior citizens. Why we did this building, and why the city did this building, was to take care of these senior citizens, and uh, take care of its residents. Caring for their seniors with quality standards is something Coleman Court has done very well. We're very pleased that we're able to do this and very happy that not only that we had somebody build it, we had the Coleman family a part of it, the city was a part of it, all that came together and made this great facility for all of you. It just makes us proud of our dad's accomplishments and proud of the city of Torrance. For this week in Torrance, I'm Juanita Dame. Thanks, Juanita. If you have questions about Coleman Court or becoming a resident, call 310-212-5898. Planning to take a road trip this summer? Make sure to consider the rising gas prices as we start the season. Prices have begun to increase due to the refinery maintenance shutdowns in California, according to the Automobile Club. A gallon of gas can run you an extra 10 cents a gallon compared to previous weeks, with the statewide average at more than $4 a gallon. The national average is actually down about 5 cents a gallon from the previous week. There is no specific timetable for when the refinery issues will be resolved here in California, so just keep that in mind if you plan on taking a long summer drive. The mayor and city council members were back in session this week. Here's an update on the latest meeting. Following in its national recognition, Mayor Scotto proclaimed July as National Parks and Recreation Month. In doing so, he urges all residents to enjoy and recognize the social, physical, mental, economic, environmental, and community benefits from participation in programs offered by the Torrance Community Services Department. Also at the meeting, council voted on and appointed members to fill vacancies on four commissions. For the Cable TV Advisory Board, Jimmy Gao was appointed, Assam Sheikh to the Library Commission, Robert Hawell to Traffic, and Charles Leone to the Water Commission. All appointees were verified as having completed the required Torrance Commissioner Certification Training. You can catch replays of this week's council meeting right here on City Cable 3 on Time Warner Cable or Verizon Fios Channel 31 every Wednesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. and 5 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. You can also watch online at torrentsca.gov. Coming up, planning to hit the sand and surf to cool off? 
we've got you covered on how to play it safe when heading to the beach. And if you're ready to fire up those summertime barbecues, make sure you keep those flames under control. We'll show you how. At what age is the color that your skin was meant to be no longer beautiful? Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults 15 to 29. And one person dies from melanoma every hour. It's time. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at SpotSkinCancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. A new business celebrates its grand opening, bringing in jobs for Torrance and great haircuts for you. Reporter Jennifer Hua has more on this new hair salon in town. Friends and families gathered to celebrate the grand opening of Vanity Styles Hair Salon in Torrance. One, two, three. The new salon specializes in all types of different services that include haircuts for men, women, and children. Its hairdressers and makeup artists can transform anyone's look for weddings or other special occasions, but their services don't just end there. We also do extensions, perms, Brazilian blowouts, straightening, and the Yuko anti-frizz here too. The main purpose of the salon is to serve the community as a beauty boutique. However, it will be doing much more than help change the appearance of its visitors. Its opening will also contribute to changing the city's economy. First of all, you're providing jobs. Secondly, and most important, you're providing great haircuts of which I don't think that's a good one. And third of all, you're providing taxes. As a Torrance native, Vanity Styles owner Michelle Izumuro explains that choosing the city to run her salon wasn't a difficult decision. I decided to open up my business in Torrance because I like the community here, I grew up here, and then I just like the people, and the location is always great for a business. Izumoto's decision to do business in Torrance was one that did not go unappreciated. We do realize you can return your business in Redondo, Manhattan, anywhere you want it. On behalf of Frank Scott and the Mayor and the entire council, we're glad you picked them on. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jennifer Hua. Thanks, Jennifer. Vanity Styles is located in Old Torrance at Torrance Boulevard and Coda Avenue. To make an appointment or for more information, call 310-977-3474. Seen any mosquitoes buzzing around lately? If so, you might want to take some precautions. The first weekly West Nile virus public health update and advisory of 2013 was released, and it includes a report from Torrance. Mosquitoes caught in an adult trap at the ExxonMobil refinery tested positive for the virus, and since the virus is constantly present throughout California and the United States, a positive result at any given site does not necessarily indicate a problem that needs immediate attention, and no specific action is currently required required by the city or county. However, the Disease Control District recommends this information is made public as a precaution. Now here are some tips to help protect yourself from West Nile virus infections. Apply insect repellent containing, a, containing DEET, which is a long-lasting effective chemical against mosquitoes. Be sure to apply during dawn and dusk. Mosquitoes like to bite in the early morning and evenings, so it's important to wear repellent during those times. Mosquito-proof your home. Make sure that your doors and windows have tight-fitting screens to keep out mosquitoes and repair 
or replace screens with tears or holes. Drain standing water. Mosquitoes lay their eggs on standing water, so make sure to check all possible sources like flower pots, rain gutters, and pet bowls. Now, if you have a pool, maintain it properly. If you have anything like an ornamental pond, mosquito fish can be supplied to you at no cost. There are small fish that they are small fish that can eliminate mosquito larvae. To report a mosquito problem or pick up these mosquito fish, call 310-915-7370. For more information on West Nile virus and the disease control district, visit their website at lawestvector.org. It's important to keep our pets healthy, not only for their own well-being, but also for the well-being of others. Torrance's Animal Control Program understands the importance of this and held their annual rabies clinic where pets were able to receive their rabies vaccinations and much more. Reporter Jennifer Hua has more on the story. Rabies is a deadly viral infection from an animal bite that kills about 55,000 people worldwide each year. Well, there's a squirrel. Squirrels carry rabies, supposedly. Um, I've seen skunks and a couple of possums, so yeah, that's one of the major things I worry about. These wildlife animals aren't the only creatures that carry rabies. Pets in our own backyard, such as dogs, cannot be overlooked because there's a good chance that they also carry the disease, especially those that have not received their shots. We figure there's probably 40,000 dogs in the city, only 11,000 are licensed, so I would think a good number of those that are not licensed are not currently vaccinated. In order for a dog to be licensed, the owner must make sure that their pet is current on their rabies vaccinations. For two days out of the entire year, the city's animal control program collaborated with Plaza de Lamo Animal Hospital to host a quick and inexpensive rabies clinic for dogs to get licensed and receive their vaccinations. This way they can do it all in one night. So it's easy to come here, it's low cost, there's no vet fee, they're just paying for the shot, $7 for a rabies shot. Uh, $12 for Bordetella, $15 for a 6-in-1 shot, and it makes it simple. Then they can go right into our office and purchase a license, and it's easy. Owners were only required to fill out simple paperwork, and after a couple shots, they could ensure their pets would be safe and healthy. Oh, he's got to keep them healthy, make sure nothing else happens to him. We have him boarded all the time, so we go on trips and make sure he's safe and doesn't give anything to anybody else in the boarding. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jennifer Hua. Thank you, Jennifer. The rabies clinic wasn't just open for dogs, but for the same cost. Pet owners were also able to bring their cats for a license in vaccination. Although the event has already passed, pets can still get their vaccinations at the Plaza Del Amo Animal Hospital starting at $17. For more information on the different treatments, uh, you can call the clinic at 310-891-3430. Summertime means outdoor fun and barbecuing with family and friends. It's also time to be safe with the flames. Here's Deja Charles to tell us how to take caution when firing up the grill. According to FEMA reports, more than 50% of residential fires are started by open flame grills through the months of May and August. Now that it's summertime and the barbecue season has begun, it is important now more than ever to learn fire prevention and how to keep your summer holidays and home fire friendly. Firefighter and Public Education Officer Laura Bedner says during this time of the year, the Torrance Fire Department is called to house fires, mostly started by burning food. One of the most common fires that we go on as Torrance Fire Department is food left out on the stove because people are multitasking, they're busy, especially if it's 4th of July, there's a family gathering, they leave something on the stove, they forget about it because they get distracted by something else, and then boom. Bedner says purchasing a fire extinguisher for the home is a top assurance for fire safety as well and using the acronym PASS. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Pull the pin out, discard it. Uh, a is for aim. You're gonna aim at the base of the fire. You're gonna be about five to seven feet away, and you're gonna aim at the base, because that's what's burning, not at the top. S is for squeeze. Now you get to squeeze your trigger. We won't do that right now. And then the other S is for sweep. You're sweeping it back and forth across the base of the flames. In the event you cannot get to an extinguisher in time, other household products can be used as well. There's other ways to extinguish besides extinguishers. You can cover, you can use baking soda. Please don't try to use flour, that, that doesn't work. Um, and don't use water because if it's any kind of an oil, it's actually going to make it worse. Captain Steve Duell says the best measures people can take is by keeping these necessities at home and paying attention to their activities. 
If you're using briquettes for your barbecue, they put them in a container that's uh, non-combustible, and they put them out with water. Be great, you know, and make sure they're fully extinguished. Uh, don't mix them with the trash or uh, any other combustible materials. So while you enjoy the summer grilling with family and friends, remember to pay attention when cooking and also check smoke and carbon monoxide alarms to ensure they're still working. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Deja Charles. Thanks, Deja. The Torrance Fire Department offers classes to residents three times a year throughout their Community Emergency Response Training Program. The next class will be offered in September. For more information, you can call 310-781-7071. And with the 4th of July right around the corner, the Fire Department wants to make sure residents are aware that fireworks of any kind are illegal in the city of Torrance. Now, this includes even the so-called safe and sane fireworks. Any person caught with any type of firework can face a minimum for First time fine of $100. Officers from the Torrance Police and Fire Departments will be teaming up with special enforcement operations to locate and cite anyone in violation of the fireworks ordinance. Remember to keep it safe and have a great holiday. More and more people are heading to the beach as summer heats up. Back to finish our two part series on water safety is reporter Jennifer Hua to tell us about how to keep it safe at Torrance Beach during the busiest time of the year. As the weather gets warmer for the summer, the city's ocean lifeguards are doing what they can to ensure the beach is safe for all visitors. Whenever you do visit the beach, it's always great to check in with the lifeguard, find the safest place to swim. And usually what we will set up are swimming areas in between two orange flags. While on duty, the lifeguards keep watch on swimmers in order to relieve those who may be concerned about certain water conditions. Today the lifeguard has been very, very busy. She's been warning the kids to stay out of a certain section of the, of the beach here and has been asking them to, uh, to, to move down the other side of the flags because of uh, some rip currents. When the beach fills up, it can be difficult for a single lifeguard to keep a close eye on everyone, so it's important for swimmers not to panic if they feel they are in danger. If you ever do get caught in a rip current, it's important to stay calm and then swim parallel to shore to exit safely out of the rip current. Threatening currents aren't the only things visitors are informed to pay attention to. Torrance Beach is also known for having stingrays that sometimes sneak up on swimmers at the shore. They like flat, calm water, so it's always important when you are entering the water is to shuffle your feet. Although lifeguards are responsible for people watching, it's also a parent's job to pay attention to their children as nature takes its course at the beach. Supervision is key, you know, don't take anything for granted, you know, uh, you know, a child, an adult, but especially a child could, could get hurt, could drown. But if a lifeguard does spot someone who looks like they might be in trouble, they never hesitate to jump in. A swimmer's got stuck in a, a very strong rip, pulled out very quickly, and uh, it took two of us lifeguards as, with basically all our might. That's one of the joys of the job is being able to save people. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jennifer Hua. Thanks, Jennifer. If anyone is interested in learning more about what the L.A. County lifeguards are doing to keep the beaches safe, they can be followed through their Twitter account at LACO Lifeguards. Coming up after the break, the Torrance Farmers Market honors and remembers a dear friend. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That changed my life. At that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. We're soldiers, always ready to protect our country. But we've also got communities. Family, friends, neighbors who count on us. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life to somebody from my hometown. See what it means to be a citizen soldier at NationalGuard.com. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work is going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Clear your calendars for July 7th as the Torrance Cultural Arts Center and Bridge USA present the Japanese Summer Festival. There will be over 60 booths filled with food, kimono, and souvenirs at the summer celebration, featuring martial arts, demonstrations, professional dancers, live music, and a traditional Mikoshi parade. The festival starts at 10 a.m. and goes until 7 p.m. at night at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center. Admission is $5 for adults and $3 for children under 12. For more information, visit torrentca.gov or bridgeusa.com. 
The Torrance Certified Farmers Market suffered a great loss this weekend at the passing of market manager Mary Lou Weiss, who died from a heart attack. The 75-year-old woman was known as a pillar in the South Bay for all of the markets she began. Here's Deja Charles with the story. Mary Lou Weiss is described by many as a fair and loyal woman. And to the farmers she worked with, they saw her as a dear friend and family. To me, she's a friend. You know, we talked about a lot of things besides here at the market, you know, sports or what, you know, fishing and stuff like that. So, I, you know, she was just, you know, she was just a dear friend to me after all these years. As a farm girl raised in Ohio, Weiss was natural at the role of market manager for the Torrance Farmers Market. Those who began with her made it clear that it would be nearly impossible to replace this extremely valued jewel. She's like family. I mean, you can't find anyone like her. Her and Jim, their whole family. I mean, they're, they're awesome. Therese Condon Yost, one of the founders of the market, says the goal was to provide the best local produce to the community while also being an advocate for local farmers. In Weiss, they found someone who could see the market's mission through. The market manager had to love the farmers, had to really understand what it meant to be a farmer, what they had to go through, and the, the issues they had to deal, even to just get here to the market. Some of them travel here a great distance. So uh, Mary Lou was the perfect person. Along with the farmer's market in Torrance, she also managed other locations in the South Bay, including the smaller market in Hermosa Beach, where she lived. She did such a phenomenal job building this market into the successful program that it is today. During this time of sudden loss, Weiss, or as many simply called her, Mary Lou, will be remembered for the fruits of her hard work and labor. For City Cable, I'm Deja Charles. Thank you, Deja. Mary Lou is survived by her husband, Jim, and their son, Stephen and Brian, and two grandchildren. Services for Weiss will be held at 5 p.m. on Sunday at Rice Mortuary here in Torrance. In lieu of flowers, the family is requesting donations be made to a charity of your choice, which supports women's issues or the Torrance Community Services Department to be used toward a tree and bench to be placed at Wilson Park. Donations for a tree, uh, for a tree and bench can be mailed to Torrance Community Services Department Department. Attention, Mary Lou Weiss Memorial, 3031 Torrance Boulevard, Torrance, California, 90503. I'm not sure if uh, many of you viewers knew, but Mary Lou, along with overseeing the farmer's market in Torrance, she managed the community services department's a community gardens program overseeing 250 gardens located at Columbia and Lago Seco Parks and served as the Community Services Department's volunteer coordinator where she organized a number of annual events for the city. That's right, Mary Lou was so friendly and she was kind and she was really funny and she touched so many lives and everyone here in Torrance will surely miss her. Well that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you.